Welcome to the Content Amplified Podcast, brought to you by Masset. Our goal is to help you get more from your marketing content. Each episode is a 10 to 15 minute interview with industry experts that share amazing insights to help you squeeze as much juice from your content as you possibly can. Here's today's interview. Welcome back to another episode of Content Amplified. Today, I'm joined by Meg. Meg, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk today. Absolutely. Well, we have a fascinating subject and I'm excited to dive in. But Meg, before we dive into the subject, maybe just for context purposes, would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself, your passions in marketing, things of that nature? I um, love to hear it. It's definitely relevant to the conversation today as well. So I'm currently a director of marketing at a growing data consultant company, but I have worked at a variety of startups over the past decade or so, uh, starting out actually in book publishing and doing that for a while in the tech space at O'Reilly Media, particularly around Python, merging languages. And then I joined the startup world and I have worked in a variety of content places. I have been a team of one, a team of three. I'm not usually more than that, uh, always growing. And my heart is really in the content because I come from that book world and I really respect the relationships that you're able to build with customers, with users, with the content you create and when you really understand a particular persona. Earlier, we were nerding out because I was <laughs> the O'Reilly thing. I come <laughs> from a family of developers. I swear I bought the books that she is is worked on and it's super fun. So that was a fun little like uh, superstar moment, like meeting your favorite athlete. I'm like, oh, I remember those books. They had those pictures on them and this and that. So super cool background, um, super relevant for the discussion as well. The topic for today that we're going to dive into how to make every piece of content work in overtime. And basically, how do you get the most out of it? Now, what's really fascinating is a lot of people talk about this subject because everyone knows you can't just create new content over and over and over again. There's always opportunities to get more out of it, but everyone has a different perspective and idea on how to do it. So I'm excited to talk to Meg. What she's done is not just, hey, repurpose content. She has this actual awesome framework about how to focus on the right things. So Meg, when you're looking at getting your content and you want it to work in overdrive, you want it to perform, where do you start? What's the best place to start when you're looking at how to do this? There's always a lot of pressure. And so my main thing when I tell people is take a breath. In the beginning, before you dive in, I know you want to, I know you want to start creating that stuff. You've got pressure from your boss. You're a small team. You've got to get the lead. You've got to get the numbers. Take a breath, build that foundation, take the framework, start with your goal. What is your goal? Is it to create particular lead gen in an industry? Is it to gather more users for this particular new aspect of your product? Take that and say, you know, for me, it might be, I want more leads in the retail space for the data consulting firm. And so I have my, my goal. And then what's the best topic that would reach those people? Do your research, find out what they're looking for, go into message boards, check the Google Trends questions, use your favorite tool. And one for my example would be Gen AI, right? Like that's, that's hot. People are confused by it, particularly non-technical people. They're overwhelmed. There's always something new. So they will probably want to know, what do I need to know? I don't need the noise. Cut through that for me. Tell me what I need to know. Grab your, you know, opportunities in retail using Gen AI. And then once you have that topic, that's when you finally start to think about what it looks like going out there. And you can say, well, I know these people are on LinkedIn a lot. So I know I'm going to want a LinkedIn campaign. I know that they like to watch interviews on this particular YouTube channel. Do I have a contact there I can reach out to? You start building those out. And then you pick the quickest one you can get that will create the others. And so for me, it's usually an interview. I find that grabbing an exec, grabbing a particular technical person at a company, getting on a call with them, hitting the record button, and just asking them all my questions, you get the transcript. From that transcript, you can get that LinkedIn campaign. You can get that blog post to get you an in to the podcast you want to hit or to the YouTube channel you want to hit. And it all goes from there. Uh, it can become a snippet 
that goes out into the world. It can become a conference talk that you're going to need 10 months from then. But you wouldn't have been able to get there if you hadn't started with taking that breath and knowing exactly what you needed. Because if you had left just to the LinkedIn campaign, or even just a blog post that could be chunked up into LinkedIn, and you're like, okay, well, I have this, but is it going to hit anything? Does anyone care? Why? When someone asks you why you spent your time on that, instead of the 8,000 other things you could be doing as a small team, you'll have an answer and you can answer confidently. I think that's the exact right framework. When you're starting with the goal, I also imagine it makes it easier to align with the business needs. They are happier to have buy-in, to give you budget, resources, because you say, hey, you want leads or you want exposure or whatever it is. That's my objective too. And this is why we're building content because this is the eventuality of what we're trying to achieve. And that conversation is just more fluid. It's how you get that buy-in and the alignment around content. Because if you approach something and the business says, hey, we're, we got to focus on leads. That's all we need. And your content is purely an awareness play. There's a disconnect and people are going to start raising hands and saying, I'm sorry, but like content needs to get cut because it's not doing it for us. But if it's really aligned with the business goals, there's a lot of value there. And I think that makes a lot of sense. One other cool thing, I love data as well. When you have the goal first, you can start to also say, not only is it aligned with the business, but here's how I'm going to track it. And you can figure out, okay, here's how I'm going to track it before I ever get down to the topic or the outreach or the execution of it. And people can say, great, now I know like how you're going to measure yourself off of success and things like that. So I love the framework because... I thousand percent subscribe to this methodology. I think it's great. Let's say I'm at a business and I've got my goal in mind and I'm breaking down. I've got the topic. I've got the outlet. I've got it all figured out. What's like the right background? Like, am I even the right person to go and execute on this? What kind of background should I have? Who should I be? What should be my training to even be able to execute on a campaign like this? What, what would you say to that kind of question? Really, there is no ideal background. That's the beauty of marketing. Uh, and, you know, I think anyone that went and just met with the marketing team at their company and asked them, where'd you all start out? How'd you get into marketing? It'll be a varied and fascinating conversation that you will not expect. Because with the wealth of information that's out there in the world right now, between just Googling an article or watching a video, really simple tooling, you don't need to be a video editor to snip together something quick, not to devalue that expertise. That is incredibly important. And if you have the budget for it, go for it. Get that production quality. But if you need to just get something done, and I used to edit interviews at one company on my Mac with the like, you know, the the one that comes with it, iMovie. And it looks great. It, it was easy. I could put the, the sounds, you can you position them at a wall with a with a plant. Like you, you build up what you need for yourself and you do the research and you can just figure it out. I really think like there's that saying of, you know, there are people walking down a path in a forest and some people see a branch and they go, oh no, there is a branch. And they kind of just sit there. And then some people figure out the way around the branch. And I think marketers in particular are really good at finding their way around the branch because they have to be, because they often do not have a lot of budget. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. And I think uh, we've talked about on the podcast before this idea of content market fit. I think it's more about finding a fit with your audience about what you're talking about than the quality of the content. And as you find that, great, you can increase the quality as you've proven that fit. But if people are not interacting and not working on it, you never should have spent money because it never would have resonated, even if it was a higher production quality or had 200 words more or had some really beautiful graphic or custom development or who knows what. It just, it won't resonate. And if it doesn't resonate, it doesn't matter how good it is. But if it does resonate, then you can load more resources into it and you can justify it and ask for those resources. Yeah, you get away with a lot if you know your audience. So let's say that you've got something more technical, like that you want to write about, maybe something that's not your specific expertise. I know you mentioned interviewing as well, but how do you get people to really interact and help you get that content creation done? What's, what's your process there? It's definitely been a learning curve because engineers are such smart, smart people. Like software engineers are the group I've worked with the most in my career. And they are brilliant. They do things that I cannot even conceive of. But you ask them to write a blog article and the deer in the headlights look that you get 
I think a lot of it, honestly, is because so many of them get PhDs. And I do not have a PhD, but I have a lot of friends who have gotten them. My understanding that the editing process in academia can be cutthroat. Like there's just, it can just be mean. And so I actually have started telling people off the bat, particularly if I know that they have a PhD, it's not like that. Like I is positive reinforcement. And so one of my favorite parts of my job is getting people to understand they are better at creating content than they think they are. And so you start them out. Sometimes it, it can be with a call and you, you get some joint down. Like, oh, I think this was a good point. Can you say more about that? Get their confidence up. I like to create outlines together, really deeply annotated outlines they can kind of take and go with. And then once something exists, you have to tell them how it's doing, right? You can't just go out into the ether. If they're getting a bunch of page views, let them know that. And it just, it blossoms. And then the next one is easier and the next one is easier. And also accepting, you know, not everyone can write. Most people can, but maybe they want to do a video instead and that's okay too. Or maybe they want to do a screencast. Engineers love doing screencasts. You know, being really flexible. And again, it's just like knowing your audience because in marketing, a lot of times you're an internal vendor, right? Like my users are the people around me in the company who need something from me. Understanding them the same way I understand the businesses, customers, and what they want and what they need to have a psychologically safe content creation experience, that's key. And once you get them going, like there's just so much they can think of and do. That's a great framework. With something that came to mind while you're talking is it's also another good avenue to say, here's a piece of content that we created. Is this something you would actually read? And sometimes the answer is no. A lot of the times the answer is no. But there's a good opportunity to say, hey, well, how would you make it interesting? And then you get their interest peaks. Oh, I'd get rid of this. And I'd start talking about this. And this is irrelevant. And you get them going. You get them riled up. Like purposely, you could show them competitor content and be like, hey, what's, what sucks about this? Oh, they, they're the wrong approach and this. And great. And now all of a sudden, you have a new piece of content because you started with something and, and you got your target market riled up on it and, and got them excited to go. Oh, yeah. The number of books that I got when I was at O'Reilly because I asked technical people, what makes you swear the most at your computer? <laughs> Just flourish. That is amazing. I love that. The, the, the curse test. You know, how many, how many cuss words does this make you? And, and here's my appropriate threshold of what's allowable and what's not. I, I think that's golden. Awesome. Well, like I promised, this goes by super fast. And so we've already come to an end. Any last minute advice? For anyone looking to get more out of their content, any ideas if there's just really like, hey, I've got good content, but what do I do with it? Or how do I make content that I can get more out of? Any last minute advice? Really trusting yourself. What kind of content do you like? When in doubt, go look at the last few articles you read, the things you shared on LinkedIn, other places in social media. Trust yourself. It's easy to not, especially in a non-technical space and where analytics can be a little iffy at times, but you know what you're doing. If anyone wants to continue the conversation, how can they reach out and connect with you, Meg? I am Meg Blanchett on LinkedIn. I am always excited to talk to new people. So please reach out. Come find me. Well, again, thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it and have an awesome day. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Content Amplified Podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. And for additional ways to get more out of your content, visit our website at getmasset.com. That's getmasset.com. And tune in next time to the Content Amplified Podcast.